Okay, so you can see that we are generating out some data and displaying these numbers that have been generated. So let's refresh a couple of times and see if these change. Yet they are in fact changing. Now let's have a look at the width of the image. So the width of the image is a bit off. It's way too big. So we need to decrease it by about half. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's not really going to be much um, changes to be made. So let's change that to 100 and come in and refresh. Okay, so that looks about right actually. Um, our image size, ah, that's the problem because we might have a uh, slightly longer characters. So let's change this to 120 just to be safe. Uh, maybe 110. So it's just a matter of fiddling around with things until you're happy. So I'm quite happy with this. Now the only thing, uh, the only problem with this is that we need to generate some kind of noise. Uh, we need to generate something that masks these uh, letters and it's still readable by humans but might not be readable by a computer so let's come down to just after um, we set our text color because the function that we're going to be using is going to require a text color in there um, and the function that we're going to be using is image line and this image line uh, function um, takes a few parameters I'll just uh, explain the function before we continue the first one is the image that we're working with the second one um, is we need we need to specify um, x1 and y1 and x2 and y2 and then the text color so we've already got this um, variable defined here so uh, this even though it says text color we're, we're creating the lines to be black as well this is the, exactly the uh, same so these are just the coordinates that we're creating that so we want to do something we want to create coordinates that are completely random uh, that, so they're going to be splashed across our image so how can we do this well I'm going to create a for loop for this um, and we're going to loop a specific amount of times and we're going to generate four variables which is x1, x2, y1 and y2 and then what we're going to do is we're going to put these into the image line function uh, in order to generate random lines with different coordinates that are going to be you know changing chopping and changing each time so we've created a for loop the skeleton for our for loop we're going to set the variable first of all which is x equal to one and then i'm going to say while well, x is smaller than or equal to let's give it a value of about 30 for now what this means is 30 lines are going to be generated because we're going to run this uh, image line function inside our for loop so 30 lines are going to be generated remember we need to increment our x value uh, each time so essentially what this does is it's going to loop 30 times this is uh, this loops going to loop 30 times so for each 30 times that we loop we want to create a variable x1 y1 x2 Oh, and y2 and these are going to be equal to a random value okay so we need a random value for each one of these so again we can use make use of our rand function as we did in here but this time we're going to be generating a number with a lower limit of a hundred uh, lower limit of one and an upper limit of a hundred so we can do that for each one I mean again you feel free to chop and change with these you can uh, mess around with values uh, depending on what kind of output you're looking for but for now this is going to generate um, a number between a 1 and 100 and now down here we can apply that to our image line function so remember I said the first parameter is image which, which is the image we're working with at the moment and then we're taking in x1 and then we need to take in x2 or y1 sorry and then I mean it doesn't really matter in the order that you put them in but I'm just adhering to the um, order in which this function takes parameters so the last one we need to put in is y2 and then obviously like I said before we need to define a color for these lines so you can feel free to choose your own colors uh, but I'm just going to be creating this black because I feel it merges with the font a lot better um, and this means that uh, it's going to be a bit harder to read. 
So we're um, inside our image, we're creating a line. So we're using the image line function in these coordinates, which are totally random. So it's going to splash them across our image, and we're creating it in black. So now let's go back and preview our image and see what it looks like. Okay, so great. What we're doing now is we're generating our random lines. They're all across our image, and it's quite hard to see the numbers. But if you do look carefully, you can still make them out. I think this one is three nine. It's either a seven or a one and three. Um, some are going to be harder to read than others. I think this is six four double one. So the point across it, the point of this is, it's still human readable, but uh, by a computer standard, it might be quite hard to read this because we've got these lines going across. Okay, so um, what are we going to do next? Well, we've generated everything here. Now what I want to do is just echo out on this page. Um, we're going to come down here under our image. And let's put a line break on the end of our image so we keep everything neat and tidy. I'm going to echo out the uh, secure session just to make sure that each time it matches what we have um, in our uh, image. So let's refresh. Now we've got 8756 here. This looks like 875 and a 6 to me. Uh, we've got 9125 here, so we've got 9125, that looks about right, and 2379. So you understand the point of this is that we're just making sure that they match every time.